Well, here's the Johnson kilowatt desktop that I'm working on. Picked it up the other day from a fellow, and uh, it was all in pieces because of the, the weight, basically. And I had to put in the uh, transformers. Well, let's see. Here is, um, down at the bottom is the power transformer. This is your AC cord. Um, up here on top is your modulation transformer. This relay shorts out the um, secondary of the modulation transformer when you're in CW mode. Um, some more power supply. These are your modulation tubes. And down here is your regulator for the screen voltage. And there's four VR150s in it and one VR, um, VR90, I believe, in the middle. And I was uh, a little confused about that for a while. I, uh, Johnson did a revision a couple of years after the uh, unit came out and that revision increased the power on the sideband and there was a bunch of changes made to that particular chassis. So hopefully we've got them all in there correctly. Power relays and uh, I haven't plugged in the uh, rectifier tubes yet. I've got a couple of uh, argon type tubes to replace the mercury vapor jobs so I'll be putting those in otherwise except for that except for those two tubes it's ready to power up um, this is a, a timer type uh, delay for the high voltage to keep it from coming on too soon so all I gotta do is change the cord of the plug on the cord it's got a, uh, a plug like this which is just a regular 110 volt type plug but it's a 230 volt type unit so I'm going to change that and um, now this area up here this is where the actual amplifier sets and uh, it goes down in here and plugs into this board here and it rests on the on the frame here so uh, here's the the front panel and there's the controls for the um, the power function and over here is uh, I have setting the, the actual amplifier and I think what's in here is a pair of 4-250s. Well, I did get a pair of 4-400s with it that I can, I can put in here if I desire. There's a, a loose nut floating around inside here somewhere. <laughs> I can hear it and I, I can look through the screen and I can see it. And I've got to take this bottom panel off. And it's got 45, I counted them, 45 volts. Typical Johnson. I don't know if that's an overkill or not, but it's going to take a while to get all those out to get that one nut, and it's right down in this area right here. And I don't know what it goes to, but we might find out once we get, uh, get in there. And you can see the front panel looks pretty good. Nothing really major wrong with it. A little smudge right here from something. So, um, I have given it a coat of spray paint. It was uh, pretty dingy looking and had some rusty places. Um, now it doesn't look too bad. Um, as you can see, now I'm not an expert painter, but... Uh, 
it does definitely look better than it did. Now this is the uh, unit that the amplifier slides into. So this is going to slide into this and it will go in there. I've had it in there before and I just it just rolls back in there. So that'll be fun. I've got this on a dolly so I can roll it up to this uh, cabinet and hopefully work it in there. Uh, this is the right side of the desk for the drawers and I've uh, also painted it and uh, over there's the drawers. I took the handles off to spray them. That's the modesty uh, cover for the back of the desk there and all this is junk here is sitting on the tabletop and as you can see the top is uh, in pretty bad shape this this stuff was this was the surface right here and it's some kind of linoleum and it was too ratty to leave on there so i'll throw that away and i'm going to have to either sand this down and paint it or cover it with linoleum or some kind of uh, vinyl or maybe even uh, Formica. I'm not sure yet. I'm still looking for something that uh, that looks halfway original. Just a solid gray. That's the problem is trying to find anything that's solid colored and not uh, not with some kind of design in it. So anyway, I think the next thing to do is get that bolt, get that nut out of here and uh, then drop it down into the uh, transmitter and get my plug changed and uh, plug it in. I, I wish there was some way to use a Variac, but it takes a 230 volt Variac and I don't have one. Uh, I would love to uh, gradually bring the power up on it, but just don't have any easy way of doing it. So anyway, um, back later with more info. Okay, we got the bottom off. Took out all 45 screws. Over here is the input circuit. There's our input coax jack. Here's our input tuning coils. Got a little fan right here. I think uh, put some oil on that. The nut was laying right here. Here it is. I can't find anything here that's missing a nut. Uh, who knows? It may have been flopping around in there for the past 70 years. Um, spark gap here for your uh, output network. It's adjustable. It's quite a gap. So, um, a lot of filtering. Every lead is well filtered for TVI prevention. So there we go. Looks like we're about ready to put the bottom cover back on. Well, we got the screws off the top. Put the ones back in the bottom first. <laughs> 45 screws and I think there's just about as many as they are on the top. So the top and the side is, is one big piece as you can see here. And uh, there's screws across the top all the way around here and then down the sides. But uh, look at the size of this variable inductor here for the plate tuning and the gear mechanism. It's just absolutely beautiful and tuned so smoothly. You can see the contactor here as it turns smoothly and silently. Um, here's the, uh, the tuning capacitor down in here. And um, that, uh, let's see here. I'll tell you, that, that is really interesting. There's a switch here, as you can see, 
Now this changes your range on your tuning from uh, 3.5 uh, to 13 to 13 to 30. So up there in the closed position is 30, I mean uh, 3.5 to 30. And it uh, kicks in this other capacitor. Uh, here's your neutralizing capacitor. Well, as it turns out, there's already 4-400s uh, in here. There's not a speck of dust. This thing is in really nice shape. It's another fan. That's Well, that's the same fan we saw from the bottom. So, there we go. That's the inside. More to come. I discovered something interesting here, how this uh, stop works for your tuning. As you tune the uh, inductor, the capacitor also tunes. They're linked together. And if you go too far, if you look down in here, as you can see, this... Uh, this mechanism down here is moving. Okay, it's got a spring on it. That's triggered by this cam on this shaft here. So when it reaches its limit, it pushes this bar toward the right. Well, then what happens on the front, our crank handle, we have a, below the crank handle, there's this pin. And when we reach the end, the pin sticks out and stops it. And then we turn away from it, the pin goes in, and we can continue the crank until we get to the other end. And as you can see, our dial here is moving. And there we go right there. It came out again. Pretty neat, huh? So we got the uh, kilowatt all hooked up and running. Um, tubes are all lit up. That's the first thing we did was check the filaments to be sure they lit up. Got the Ranger hooked up to it. And... Uh, I've got a dummy load here as a divider for a, to reduce the power to the amplifier by at least 50%. Makes it a bit easier to load up. Um, so over here is the watt meter and we're running this on 110 volts. So my output is right at 300 watts Try to demonstrate this. I'll kick this over on transmit. As you can see, uh, play current. That's up there around 600 mils. And that's due to the low play voltage on 110. Um, so you can look over there and see the. Uh, Power, power output is uh, right at 300. The play current dips as it should. Let's see if I can get around here and show the front. So um, when I transmit, that red light will come on on the right down there. Let's see if I can demonstrate this. Dip this plate. Okay. You see the four dash four hundreds in there. 
blowing away. So now we need to test the modulation, so I'm going to have to find a microphone, plug it into the Ranger. That will be next. We're back with the microphone. And uh, push to talk isn't working on this, so I have to switch it manually. I've got a little um, radio to listen to here. And we're going to fire this up, see how she sounds. One, two, one, two, testing. One, two, three, four. November 4, Lima, Quebec, testing. Testing, testing, testing. 300 watts AM power on 110 volts. Sounds uh, pretty good. All right. So there we go. Got some AM.